All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, uh, and I'm joined by my colleague Ryan today. Hey, how's it going? Going well, Ryan. I want to discuss a bunch of news that happened with Tesla this week for you know anyone shopping their vehicles. Specifically, I think the most compelling in their lineup, the Model 3 and the Model Y. Some big news to discuss with both of these. Certainly. Let's talk about it. Here's the most exciting news. There is a new Model Y that is rear-wheel drive and it has a slightly different battery going on inside of it. Of course, this isn't advertised on Tesla's site, but basically it's cheaper, it's rear wheel drive, uh, and it's got this different battery thing going on. Can you, Ryan, briefly explain the situation with its battery uh, and your experience with that? Because you have a Model 3 that has similar technology. Of course, so the Model Y, as some of you may know, is essentially just a taller stretched out version of the Model 3. And this new rear wheel drive Model Y is just a stretched out version of the rear wheel drive Model 3, and that's the vehicle I have. It's a really great base model, and it has solid range and very good charging. And one of the things that's really interesting and kind of unique at this point is that it has a different battery chemistry. It's called lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, and it has a few disadvantages as well as a lot of advantages. Yeah. So what are some of the uh, disadvantages of this? Because, you know, you think cheaper car, okay, different battery technology, like this is probably worse in some ways, right? Yeah. So there are some downsides to having an LFP battery. The biggest one is energy density. It's simply not as dense as other types of lithium ion batteries, uh, which is to say you're not able to put as much energy in the same size battery. Additionally, LFP batteries are a lot more sensitive to temperatures, so they have to sp spend a bit more energy to make sure that they're in the right temperature range for both charging and discharging. However, with that being said, there's a ton of advantages for the LFP. One of the big ones is cost. They're less expensive. Another big one is its battery behavior. They're actually uh, able to be charged all the way up to 100%. A lot of times you don't want to do this with other types of lithium batteries as it can cause uh, degradation. However, there's a lot less risk of that with an LFP battery. It's got a lot better cycle life and it should last a lot longer. Additionally, Tesla actually recommends that you charge it up to 100% at least once a week and that's to help calibrate the battery and make sure it can give you an accurate range prediction. LFP, a lot going on there. I think you did a good job breaking that down, Ryan. Uh, like the downsides, okay, it's a little bit heavier. Doesn't matter as much because these are actually smaller batteries, right, in their shortest range vehicles. So the consumer is not going to notice that as much. Um, Tesla's figured out how to make them pretty efficient. Uh, you mentioned, right, cold weather they're going to be more affected by. So in winter, the performance can maybe, you can see like less range basically because they're more affected by uh, extreme cold in particular. Uh, one interesting, you know, upside uh, is also this battery chemistry. It's cheaper, Ryan. It involves iron instead of uh, the nickel and the uh, manganese and cobalt that we see in uh, other lithium ion chemistries in EVs. Basically, if you care about EVs in the environment, this battery chemistry is kind of interesting because it uses materials that are, I think, ethically and environmentally a bit more sustainable if that's something you care about. But like you said, that's right. Uh, no cobalt. Yeah, cobalt is huge. I mean, that's a very problematic mineral for many reasons. People are trying to figure out how to use less and less of it in batteries. You don't need it in an LFP. Uh, additionally, right, uh, you can charge it to 100%, and you actually should to help the battery have an idea of what percentage it's at regularly. Uh, makes it super easy, kind of lessens, honestly, the impact of the vehicle having less range and smaller battery because you can use more of it. Uh, and also, just like you said, higher cycle life, that means you can use it longer without it degrading as much. So it's going to be a very durable, good, uh, honestly, battery chemistry for lots of folks. And it makes so much sense for Tesla to roll it out to Model Y. Uh, we're seeing Ford do a similar move with the Mustang Mach-E upcoming. I don't believe those are for sale yet, but like this makes so much sense. Um, and yeah, as it applies to Model Y here, Ryan, we get a little bit less range, 260 versus right 330 if you were to spend five grand more or four and a half grand more on a Model Y long range. Uh, you also you know, get a 1.8 seconds slower, zero to 60, 6.6 uh, .6 seconds. And of course, it's rear wheel drive only, just like the Model 3 it's based off of. 
Uh, rear wheel drive on EVs, I don't think is always a big of an issue as people think it is because you can get the appropriate tires for your climate and all wheel drive, of course, will have better power delivery on adverse conditions and of course helps with that zero to 60 time. But with the right tires, uh, you know, unless you are living in frigid uh, Nordic conditions, I think most people will be fine with rear wheel drive. Yeah, with the right tires, I don't think that you necessarily need all wheel drive. Perhaps if you're really into winter sports and do a lot of that kind of stuff, maybe you do need all wheel drive. But for I think the vast majority of people, even people living uh, in colder winter climates, you might not really need the all wheel drive. Good tires might be enough. Yeah. And by being rear wheel drive, I think it kind of helps offset some of the downsides we mentioned with that different battery chemistry, because right, LFP are heavier. Well, again, the battery doesn't have to be that large and it's rear wheel drive. So by having one motor instead of two, there's fewer losses. It's more efficient. We've seen this in testing out of spec. Uh, in addition, right, if you go deep in Tesla site, go to nerd territory, technically this has a lower peak charging speed in terms of the kilowatts it can take in. Not as much of an issue because again, it's a smaller battery and the vehicle is more efficient. So it's going further uh, for less energy. That's right. And I've had plenty of experience taking my Model 3 on road trips. I think the charging is really fantastic. It charges extremely quickly, uh, regardless of what state of charge you're at, really. And you're able to get really solid range and really, really amazing efficiency. Yeah. So if this new Y is anything like your three, and by all indications it is, I think it's going to be a very easy buy for a lot of folks. There are still reasons you may want the long range, in particular the performance. Again, for you know the performance, the zero to 60, you're just not going to get that on the rear wheel drive spec. But nonetheless, this is also cool. One wrinkle I want to mention before we get to the rest of the news is that because it's using LFP, uh, these batteries are made by CATL, who's a Chinese company. They're sourced from China. Uh, and yet Model Y, like Model 3, is eligible for the full tax credit, which you would think requires U.S. source batteries. Well, because the long range and the performance are still using battery cells that you know, meet the U.S. requirements, there's no issue here, at least for now. There is a possibility next year, uh, in 24, uh, 2024, this changes. We don't honestly don't know yet. It's not concrete. Tesla may find a way to work this out, but that's one thing to consider here. Uh, if you're looking at this, $7,500 as a federal tax credit may be halved or maybe not on the table at all. Unlikely, but it's potentially possible for next year, specifically for rear wheel drive Model Y and 3. Right. Tesla is mentioning that that could be possible, that you could lose some or all of the tax credit next year, but we really don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, but what we do know is you get it now through the end of December. Uh, and that's great. Model Y, super cool, super exciting to see a new Tesla, even if it's a you know, battery uh, change we've seen in another one. Makes a lot of sense in the Model Y. A lot of people want the hatchback. A lot of people want the space. They just want a little bit of bigger Model 3. Well, there you have it. Uh, the Model Y long range and performance, as you saw, got a little bit cheaper too, I think by about $2,000. Depends on whether you get the long range or the performance, but that's great. Uh, and all of those are, right as of this year, at least eligible for the tax credit. We get into Model 3, there's no new Model 3. They still have the one you have, Ryan, that's awesome, the rear wheel drive. They've got the long range and the performance. Uh, there's no news on the refreshed Model 3 yet for the US. However, they price dropped the Model 3 as well this week. So it is cheaper by $1,200 to $3,000, depending on the configuration you get. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, it's kind of exciting. I think anyone who was already thinking about buying a Model 3 or on the fence, I don't think $1,200 is going to be, you know, the big factor that's going to make them decide like, oh, I got to do it now. But over the past several months, we've seen price cut after price cut and the prices continue to keep going down. And at this point, these prices are really fantastic and extremely compelling. They look really good in comparison with a lot of the competition. And, you know, I'm not a Tesla fanboy, but this is a really great product, especially when you consider the value. Yeah, you and I watch the market a lot, so these price drops can seem iterative in their step changes and everything. But when we consider the fact of where this vehicle was six months ago, where the market was six months ago, 
that is really cool for value. Uh, and yeah, you get a brand new car potentially for that price. Uh, the three performance also, Ryan, I want to note, right, that before, uh, because of the price cap on sedans for the tax credit, was uncomfortably close to 55 grand if you added like any options on that. That is no longer an issue. By the way, here on Tesla's site, I'm using purchase price. When you're shopping all these vehicles, I would highly recommend using purchase price instead of the probable savings Tesla likes to automatically sort you to uh, because it just makes it more transparent of what you're actually paying out of pocket. But anyhow, uh, three performance, Ryan, now I could get, you know, whatever uh, paint color I wanted. I could add in the white interior and still be comfortably under that 55 grand cap. If you're curious if you're eligible or not, I actually made a video. You can check that out on the info card about tax credit eligibility um, and all of the nuances of that. But, you know, you combine Tesla getting these incentives, uh, you combine the Y and the three price cuts that we've seen over the last few months, like you said, Ryan, really puts, a, I think, a really strong, uh, you know, fire to the competition. Uh, Model 3 in particular, because that has so little competition, just the Polestar 2 and the Ionic 6, which we made videos about on this channel. I like both of those cars. I drive a Polestar 2, but the Model 3, from just a value dollars and cents perspective, irregardless of whatever other, you know, design or other preferences you have towards the other brands, really hard to argue with, you know, the miles of range, the charging performance, the software, all you get with three. And Model Y, it's a little more of a stacked market. I really am curious to get our hands on the LFP Mustang Mach-E. Uh, and of course, as Volkswagen ID4, Nissan Aria, there's a lot of crossover competition. But still, when it comes to price, especially with these cuts, Tesla is just I think they're really, really driving the competition hard. And if you're, you know, care about performance in zero to 60 times as well, their powertrains are just, you know, giving you such a value here. Um, you get a lot of car for the money. Right. And even for those of us who don't like Tesla, don't want to buy a Tesla for whatever reason, this is putting a lot of pressure on other manufacturers to create better products and cheaper products for us. Competition is ultimately better for us consumers. Absolutely. I mean, I feel bad for them because I know it's very hard to make a profit on EVs with batteries right now. Tesla has so many advantages of the vertical integration. But as consumers, that's not our issue. This has got to get figured out. And wow, Y and 3 inventory, really compelling. Now, there will be comments before we close off. I know people talking about, oh, Model 3 refresh in the US. Isn't that coming? We know nothing about it yet. Model Y refresh. Don't we know rumors about that? Yes, those are far away off. The Model Y as a product is probably going to stick around for several, several, several months in the US. And three, I think through the end of the year, probably we're not expecting any imminent news about a refresh Model 3. So if you want a Tesla Model 3 or a Y in the near term, this is kind of uh, all the information we have. Yeah, and one thing I'd like to point out is, you know, it's possible that the price gets cut even further in the future. We simply just don't know. But regardless, I think the prices that we're seeing right now, especially when you consider uh, the federal and potentially state or local incentives that might be available, it's a really great product, a really compelling vehicle, and I think a great time to purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, if there are future price changes and news, then you can learn all about it at Out of Spec Guide. Uh, thanks so much for joining me on uh, this one, Ryan. It was great seeing you.